People all over the world have heard the story of Jesus' birth, but have you ever wondered if there's more to this familiar story? The fact that the Bible records the event in detail tells us it must be something remarkable. In this video, we'll begin to explore the deep significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. Seeing even a little of its profoundness can be life-changing. Let's look at some verses. Isaiah 7:14 says, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and will bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. This prophecy was written 700 years before Jesus' birth. The New Testament opens with its fulfillment. Matthew 1.18 says, Now the origin of Jesus Christ was in this way. His mother, Mary, after she had been engaged to Joseph before they came together, was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Note one on this verse in the New Testament recovery version explains what it meant for Mary to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Although Christ was born of Mary, he was a child of the Holy Spirit. The birth of Christ was directly of the Holy Spirit. His source was the Holy Spirit, and his element was divine. Through the Virgin Mary, he put on flesh and blood, the human nature, taking the likeness of the flesh, the likeness of men. Jesus was born as a child with flesh and blood, but his source was the Holy Spirit. We can see more about Jesus' origin in Matthew 1.20. But while he pondered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which has been begotten in her is of the Holy Spirit. Let's read note one here. God was first born into Mary through his spirit. After the conception was completed, he, with the human nature, was born to be a God-man, possessing both divinity and humanity. This is the origin of Christ. So Matthew 1:18 and 20 show us that the birth of Jesus was by no means the ordinary birth of an ordinary man. It was the extraordinary incarnation of God himself, the birth of a God man, a wonderful person who was both divine and human. This is amazing. But why did God become a man? Matthew 1, 21 through 23 answers this question by revealing two names of this God-man, Jesus and Emmanuel. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this has happened so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, let's take a closer look at what these names mean. Note 1 on Jesus in verse 21 says, Jesus is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew name Joshua, which means Jehovah the Savior, or the salvation of Jehovah. Hence, Jesus is not only a man, but Jehovah. And not only Jehovah, but Jehovah becoming our salvation. Thus, he is our Savior. Because of the fall of mankind, all human beings need a savior to save them from their sins. God became a man, first of all, to be our savior. Only the God-man Jesus can save us. In his body of flesh and blood, Jesus suffered death on the cross for our sins. He accomplished redemption for us and then resurrected from the dead. By believing in Jesus as our savior, we're forgiven of all our sins and delivered from eternal judgment the name Jesus is incredibly meaningful. The God-man Jesus is our Savior. Now let's explore the name Emmanuel. Note 2 in verse 23 says, Jesus was the name given by God, whereas Emmanuel, meaning God with us, was the name by which man called him. Jesus the Savior is God with us. He is God, and he is also God incarnated to dwell among us. He is not only God, but God with us. The name Emmanuel shows us that God also became a man so he could be with us. The eternal God became an approachable man. He lived a perfect, sinless life on earth among fallen humanity. As the God-man, he reached mankind with his love, mercy, and kindness. 
He spoke words of righteousness and truth that bring people out of the darkness and into light. They realized he was more than just a man. This is why they called him Emmanuel, God with us. Actually, God's desire was always to be joined to human beings, to be their life and everything to them. So in resurrection, Jesus Christ became the life-giving spirit who can enter all those who believe in him. When we believe in him, we're not only saved from our sins, he also comes to live in us, to be our life, and to be with us always. Isn't the birth of Jesus amazing? We've seen God became a man to be our savior. Now we realize that we can enjoy God's salvation all the time by calling the precious name of Jesus. We've also seen that as Emmanuel, we have God's comforting and encouraging presence with us everywhere and in every situation. If you haven't yet received Jesus as your Savior, you don't have to wait any longer. Just pray this prayer with a sincere heart. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the true God. Thank you for being born as a real man. Lord, I confess I'm a sinner. Thank you for dying for my sins. I receive you as my Savior right now. Come into me and live in me. Thank you, Lord. You are now with me all the time. Amen. If you prayed to receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, click here for resources that will help you in your walk with God.